Hello, my name is Ryan Linfield. I just wanted to take a moment to go over OSPF router IDs. When looking at the OSPF router ID, it is assigned to the OSPF process or selected by the OSPF process when the process is started. So what does that really mean? Well, when the router itself boots up, let's just say it you know, performs its power on self test, loads the operating system, brings up interfaces, and then starts the OSPF process, OSPF is going to take a look at the interface status. And if an interface is down, you're not going to be able to use that IP address as a router ID. If it's up, you can use that interface IP address as your router ID. What that means, though, is that using the physical interface IP address as your basis for a router ID could be unpredictable. Based on the state of the interface, if something goes down if it, and the interface is down, it's going to pick a different interface for the IP address. The IP address that is selected is going to be the highest IP, um, and then this can later be used in a DR election. But it's only used as a tiebreaker. A lot of folks will hyper-focus on the fact that router ID can be used, but they don't think about it as being a tiebreaker later. The other problem with using your physical interfaces, again, is that they're going to be dynamic. Based on the interface being up or down, the IP address may be available or not available for use. So what can we do to make that a little bit more stable? If you use a loopback IP address, so option one we'll say is a physical interface. Option two is going to be your loopback. Remember, loopback is just a logical interface that we create in software. We assign it an IP address. It's always up, and then that IP address can be advertised through the environment, and we can use it for management purposes. This is sometimes recommended because it gives you a bit more stability than physical, but what's even better than this is just hard coding it by using the router ID command. And that's what we see here. By setting the router ID, that's going to hard code the OSPF process to use the exact same value every single time. Now, that router ID could appear in some of your logging messages. So if you are pushing all of your logs to a central database, maybe you know something like Cisco Prime or Splunk, and you want to archive and search through those later, we may want to make sure that the IP addresses that reference a router are always going to be the same. The best way to ensure that they're always the same is by using this router ID command. Hope that makes sense of the three different options that we can use and why using the router ID would be the most reliable. Even if you use a loopback, remember that loopback, even though it doesn't go down, if somebody creates a new loopback later and the router restarts, Whenever the OSPF process comes up, it's going to pick that loopback interface. So once again, it gives us an opportunity to change. By hard coding the router ID, this ensures that that value never changes. Um, when we look at it here, this is a dotted decimal notation. It's going to be converted over to just a standard decimal number. So it looks a little bit funny within your uh, OSPF updates if you actually look at the protocol header. But this is just used to identify the router. Remember, when it comes down to DR election, there's a priority mapping, and this is what we should really be setting. It's one by default, so we can set it higher than one. Set it to anything above one, and you'll go ahead and win the DR election. So that's it. Uh, thanks for writing in the question, and I hope that that helps.